The Square Ball Podcast. Hello and welcome to the show. This show is brought to you in association with our favourite law firm, isn't it? Levi Solicitors, who will offer you a 10% discount on your legal fees at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Why don't you try and find a nice new inventive way to sell something we've done hundreds, if not thousands of times, Michael? Well, I'm still basking in the glory of um, conveyance, National Conveyancing Week, aren't I? Of course, it's still on, is it? It's still on, yeah. It yeah. runs till Friday. Yeah. Which is good, if you like conveyancing, which I do. Yep. And um, I can't tell you much what's going on because it's uh, the first rule of... Have you not been down? The first rule of National Conveyancing Week is you don't you don't talk about National Conveyancing Week. like Fight Club. Exactly like that. But right. if you want to speak to conveyancing, about conveyancing with someone who can speak to you about it and will and will help and will do some conveyancing... And you'll meet similar levels of professionalism like you're getting from Michael now. Levi Solicitors. Yep uk slash the square ball. While you're there doing your conveyancing, get your will sorted out. Might as well. Keep them in mind for probate if and when. Exactly. And uh, all the other, the other stuff, bits. All too. the other bits. Yep. Super. Well done. Thank you, Levi's. Uh, right into the show, weekly roundup. What's been going on? Well, are you thinking about anything else but promotion? Or are you thinking about rail seats going up in the cop? Well, it's, it's my seat is being railed, so to speak. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's sort of exciting. Nice. It's, it and it's ended. Uh, the previous batch is on the row behind me, so I presume they're just going moving it forward. But yeah, it's... did your people speak to their people? Said, "Come on." Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I've, I've been appealing for this for a while, um, but that's, it's good, I suppose, isn't it? It's not proper safe standing, is it? In the sense that you can stand up at it and lean on the barrier because I think the, the, the rail's not a bit too low. Uh, I think you can have a lean, can't you? I think yeah. You can have a lean. If you, what if you if you're small? Well, I am, so it's fine. <laughs> you're not small. I'm a nice height. Uh, you're, bi- you're bijou. <laughs> I went up there for a game last season. I can't remember what. But I'm sure I think you could have a nice lean there. That was basically the feedback on Wacko I saw. Mm. There was a lot of people excited, like, oh, I can have a lean at the game now. That'd be good. <laughs> and yeah, there were a few people pointing out it is safe standing until there's a game like the Leicester home game when there's a late winner and people are then standing on the rails and sort of jumping off them. But yeah. that's just part of the fun, isn't it? I mean, anything can be an, be like a danger, can it, or an obstacle if you want it to be. If there's Leeds yeah. fans involved, yeah. Yeah, like I said, the Leicester game, the row behind me is safe standard. So in theory, no one from behind should have ended up in my row, but they definitely did. Yeah. They, they might not have even been from the row directly behind. They might have been <laughs> from either further back because I didn't recognise them. <laughs> so, but it was nice. It's nice to mix with other people, isn't it? See the sign off at the end of the email says thank you for your continued support and we look forward to welcoming you to Ellen Road on Sunday the seventeenth of March. What if you're not going? How do they know? It's a bit presumptuous, isn't it? Got a season ticket, isn't it? Yeah. Take it a guess. Yeah. But maybe I'm not going because I'm disgusted at the rails. Yeah. But I will say with the rail seating when it's behind you, it's a, a perfect height where you sit down and having sat without rail seating for ages, you do sit down and go conk, bang your head every <laughs> single time. What is that? Because you just can't take it anymore. I'm going to get some. Um, Pipe lagging to put on my bit because I'm sick of oh, so like so that foam tubing. I'm sick of bumping my head on it. Start, right. start going to the game in a scrum cap. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good idea, but anyway, that's good, isn't it? I've got no real opinion on that. No, well, it is it's something that they need to do. I think because the safety people weren't happy that people have been standing in the cop for how many years? Twenty five years? However, yeah. however long it's been there. So I mean, a quarter of a century. Thirty I think years, is, in fact, isn't it? Whatever it is. Yeah, yeah I, think it, I think it was like 94, wasn't it? 94, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah so it's been, th- it's been 30 years. I think that's adequate time to figure out that people are going to stand there. So good <laughs> on not, for being right on it. It's not really working, is it, this, <laughs> this, this whole seated bit? No. I know uh, when Bates was there, there was a brief period where they'd obviously send the stewards out to tell people to sit down, and they'd spend ages and ages going up each row, yep. getting everyone to sit down, looking down the row, everyone sit, everyone sit. And then as doing, soon as... Doing the arms. Then they'd get like a few rows in and someone would start stand up and sing for late and the stewards yeah. just walk to the bottom of the stairs like like painting the fourth bridge you just go all, back to the start again all done never mind the design is to enable fans to stand safely at key moments in the game then revert to using your seat at other times is that how it works half there? time yeah that's when the seat gets used at half time okay fair enough fair enough yeah good um i hope safe standing goes in when they do the rebuild proper safe standing i mean they'll do the west it won't go in there will it they should do. That would be good, actually. It'll just be um, disgusting corporate facilities. Mm. Well, actually, no, good. I mean, disgustingly good. You know, expensive ones as well. Right. I mean. Yes. Yes. Uh, what else are we going to talk about then? Are we going to talk about promotion now or should we talk about Junior Furpo being a full international with the Dominican Republic? He looks good in that shirt, doesn't he? Pointing to the badge. 
It's a nice shirt, to be fair, isn't it? Is it? It's Macron. It's Macron. Yeah. I feel like the the badge is very anonymous. Could be anything that. That could be like an oil company or uh, like a Londis or something. It's just a sort of swirl, isn't it? Yeah. Which is probably hugely disrespectful because it probably has some great meaning. <laughs> <laughs> to my eyes, it looks like a swirl. <laughs> But he's uh, he looks he looks well in it. Are you, aim- are you aiming to fall out with the whole of the Dominican Republic here? They won't come to Leeds, will we? What to find you? To find to find me and hunt me down? Have you ever been there? People go on holiday there, don't they? Uh, what Dominican Republic? Mm. Yeah, you've been? No, no, no. <laughs> Rob? No, I've not. It looks nice though. I'd like to. I think my wife's been prior to us getting together here. Oh, interesting. That so he used to treat her a bit better, did he? Take her nice places. I think she won it actually. She won a competition with a travel agent. Yeah, well, didn't take me, but um, yeah, it's, I don't mind the shirt. It's uh, it's a white shirt with sort of a black collar, black Macron logo, and it's sort of like a diamond pattern in it that f- fades from white at the top to uh, it looks like sort of goes grey towards what I presume will be maybe black shorts with it. I don't know because Junior's not wearing them, but mm. uh, yeah, all right. That will you be buying one? I'll wait and see if we retain the services of Junior Furpo. Right, and if he can maintain his his performance, yeah, it'd uh, be a good booze baton destination. That in a way, day to the Dominican Republic to watch Junior Firpo. Mm. I did find a um, an Argentina shirt with Becky O ten on the back a while ago that I'd, I'd ordered from some dodgy uh, Thai website or something back in back in the two thousands. What's but, the yeah. best thing you've bought on a Thai website? Oh, I'd say probably bundles of fake currency. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> they sell them. You get the adverts on DH Gate. You always get like completely random products. There's only like a gun, some fake currency, and then like um, a woman's dress or something that you, you get served adverts for. And you're like, these are all useful, I suppose. So you're officially confessing right now to money laundering. That's great. It and won't be in, very good if, if, the, um, if the standard of the of all the fake stuff is. That's just, just reminding me. Like, I've got um, a big stack of uh, Yugoslavian dinar, I think it is, because we visited just before the breakup of Yugoslavia into the respective countries. But we've got like a big stack of notes that are probably worth about 10 pence now. <laughs> but uh, we used to like, you, you know, use them for playing card games mm. or whatever. But it's funny to have something like, it's like a relic of like the, the Soviet Cold War era. Nice. Yeah. But it might be worth something now. You never know, but they're stuck in an envelope in my loft at the minute. Um, not what I expected to be talking about. Should we talk about promotion then? yet? Well, let's talk about Junior Firpo's injury that he's going to come back with um, <laughs> when he goes to play Aruba and Peru in and March. Do, and do you know what we'll do is we'll move Archie Gray, who is now a man, we'll move into left back because he can do it all. Scored a goal there, didn't he? Only played there for a brief period. Yeah. Got a goal that was definitely his. Yeah. Now now Archie Gray's a man. Is it time we ask him, we, we demand that he steps up? Yeah, he, he needs to stop being carried in the way it has been so far. Stop hiding. <laughs> Stop hiding. Yeah, ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, only, only just 18. Terrifying. And he's that good. And he can now use the grown-up changing rooms with everybody else, which is funny, isn't it? Like, for safeguarding reasons, he had to go get changed on his own. Can you imagine that? Like, that's a little tap on the shoulder. Come on then, Archie. In there. I hope the bigger boys don't bully him. Right. That has just cast my mind back to uh, to getting changed for PE at school, which was always a grim experience. Mm. Um like being horse whipped and forced to go into the showers and stuff like that. Just horrible. PE teachers of the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> An interesting breed. Why? <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Leave <laughs> solicitors. Yeah. No, we, we can't do libel, can mm. we? No, that's the... Do you reckon Archie celebrated with a drink? Maybe one. Do you reckon? I don't know if he's going to James Milner it and just like stay away from it. Yeah, he might have had one as a... Oh, yeah, almost as a token gesture. A shandy. Be like, yes, I'll have, I'll have a small a, a bottle of lager as a, <laughs> as a, to prove a point. But can you yeah. remember? Can you remember turning eighteen and what you Do did? You know for what? It? I actually can't. I I can very very clearly because it was slap bang in the middle of my A levels. Like the, we had an exam, we had an exam mm-hmm. the week before and an exam the week after. So me and my mates just sort of shuffled off to the pub. And I was clutching my new ID or whatever. I've always been very low key on birthdays. Yeah. Went. Just do something else. Went to a local, like a local pub in Bradford, one, one that wouldn't let us in underage bastards before. <laughs> I was desperate to get ID. They didn't ID me. Yeah. yeah, same thing happened to me. We went to this really shit bar in Escape. It was where we used wow. to go to drink underage, but for some reason they'd never serve me. So I was like, I'm going to go. I'm going to have my ID. And they grasped my ID. I'm like, yeah, 
have this. Yeah. And I went and ordered the bar and they didn't even ask. And I was like, oh, great. I've just come to this really shit bar for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's you, Xscape as in Castleford, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, nice. When did you last get ID'd, Rob? Uh, do you know what? Alco Sazda often gets brought up on this podcast. I often go in there and there is one woman in there that always IDs me. Really? And I'm getting a bit annoyed now because I'm like, you do this every time. It's like, you've got a beard now. Yeah, I just think, just look yeah. at me. I'm haggard. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Yeah, so you've got to be, it's the challenge 25 thing as well in this country, mm. isn't it? So if you if you look under 25, they'll, they might ID you. Please don't be offended and all that, as it says on the literature. That stopped a long time ago. Yeah, not, not yeah, really it's, sure. it's not, I mean, is it? Um, anyway, Sky have moved another game, haven't they? Yeah. Bastards. They're going to move all of them. All of them, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Just don't book anything, would be my advice. Yeah, so another, another 12.30, um, Saturday the 13th of April. I hate 12.30 kickoffs mm. as well. The atmosphere is just always worse because everyone has to get up in the morning and leave the house i feel like you i feel like you need a bit of breathing space for football ideally where you can take a bit of time get into town if you want have a few drinks whereas this just doesn't leave much space for it unless you're a particularly hardcore drinker who wants to start at like 10 a.m yeah it's always just i can't remember what game it was recently that was at 12 30 and we went to a bar at like 11 and it was just a bit bleak mm. and mates had coffees because you're in a bar you're like well might as well have a beer. <laughs> and then you just sort of feel sad about your life. Yeah, and before you know it, you're leaving the ground and you've got a slight hangover and it's still only like two. half two and you're <laughs> yeah. like, oh, what's going on here? Yeah. It's all wrong. It's all wrong. Fourth to last game of the season. At least, one, uh, at least people will get to wear Andy Hinchcliffe, though. That's, that is, yeah. Or what, Don Goodman. What a treat. What I feel treat. like we've had Hinchcliffe a lot more than Goodman recently. Has he been promoted? Goodman's been doing some Premier League stuff, hasn't he? Yeah. Has he? Yeah. Jesus. What on earth brought that on? Clearly it's, talented, not, it's not performance related, is it? Talented man. Talented man. Um, yeah, fourth to last game of the season. I mean, we could be promoted by then. That could be the day we clinch it. I must admit, I was writing this because I was writing the amendments on the, the calendar at home, you know, yep. so people know where I'm going to be. I was, I was looking through it and I was like, God, we're nearly there. But this isn't this isn't even far away and the season's almost done. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it, how fast this season has gone? It yeah, feels, it, it feels it, like it's just sort of passed in a bit of a, a blur. Yeah, well, it was Christmas and then we've got one more game and it's basically April. And then it's like, oh, fucking hell. It's the end. It's the bit that Farker was going on about like five minutes ago where he's saying, we'll look at it with six games to go. And we're like, we're almost there, aren't we? Yeah, well, we were saying when we did the live show just before Christmas, you know, as a thank you to the um, to the BBC lads and Phil. We said, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll take you out. We'll get some food and get a drink. Just, well, we'll do it after Christmas because obviously everyone wants to sort of clock off for Christmas now and go spend a bit of time with families or whatever. Yeah, no, you say it's nearly April. <laughs> it's just stupid. Soon be dead. Yeah, soon be dead. But, um... Yeah, it has gone very, very quickly as this season. And I feel, I think I feel all right about it still, just about. I had my little wobble. It's because we're second in the league. Yeah. That helps. It's actually been really good, yeah. I don't know if people have noticed. <laughs> <laughs> We've been ace. And we might be top of the league very that's, soon. That's a really exciting development. I must admit, I didn't see it coming when Leicester was 17 points clear, which again feels like about five minutes ago. But here we are. Um, yeah, because they obviously have a cup game Southampton have no game because they were meant to be playing Leicester and it just leaves us free to be top of the league yeah from a psychological standpoint it is to depose Leicester would be a big thing wouldn't it even that if it is only temporary and they have a game in hand just to just to be there and say you've, you've done that and now we're after you we're coming after you I think they know I, I think they've <laughs> Are they aware from of listening that? to their fans yeah <laughs> They've realised. They're, bit... they're handling it well, though, aren't they? It's fine. <laughs> There's a bit of concern. Um, but, I mean, I'm, I'm still expecting at least one fairly major slip-up from us. A, a Wigan at home type arrangement where we are a Cardiff away or a Forest away or, you know, some of the Bielsa promotion games where there was some way we lost them and you were like, oh, shit. I think we might have knackered this. Is that is that your football PTSD talking, though? Because I don't see it this well, time. Well, I think it's just inevitable that you will at some point lose a game I'm not saying we're, I'm not saying we're not going to lose a game but I don't necessarily see as it being a catastrophic awful one in that way I think we might just mm. lose lose a game yeah I don't necessarily see it being catastrophic but it's interesting Millwall coming to Ellen Road this weekend because I think it was Bielsa's first season when Millwall came to Ellen Road quite late on mm. and was it Sheffield United lost in the early kickoff and then we beat yeah. Millwall and it was like fuck we're going to do it this is brilliant and then like a couple of games later we had the Wigan game but you'd, it just there, there will be twists and turns still to come. And you think, right, let's just not shit the bed here. Yeah, I, think I'm, I keep trying to talk myself into it as well. Because obviously I would like us to just keep winning. And I think we've, we're good enough to keep winning. 
but just trying to be like prepared for the fact that we won't one week and we might drop down a third, but it'll be temporary because then Leicester will play Ipswich the next week or something and it'll all write itself and you'll be like, well, okay, this just, is be, the just f- be calm. Well, this is the first time that I'm viewing it almost week to week. Like I felt mm. like this big sort of existential dread around the Bielsa promotion, which possibly in hindsight has made it feel more special and a, a little bit more kind of lightning in the bottle and, and the fact that we were doing it without parachute payments, whereas now we're kind of expected to be up there. So it's, it's framed it slightly differently and maybe mm. that's why it's not being the all singing, all dancing, exciting, you know, march to promotion that it, um, you think it would feel like, you know, it's not quite felt as exciting as it because there's, there's still so much on the line and it's still mm. so tight at the top. I don't know. But um, I, this, this is the first time in my life I can remember thinking one game at a time. And I don't know if that's Farker, if that's Farker's demeanour that's kind of properly rubbing off on me and making me just be a bit, a bit more grown up and philosophical about it. I don't know. I think as well it's the fact we've not lost this year. That does help. <laughs> <laughs> the, the blip this year so far has been an away draw, which is kind of fine for the most part isn't it just drawing drawing away in a local derby isn't generally speaking if you look across the season you go all right that's fine these things happen do you know what else is stupid and, and this is it's completely it's an intangible it means nothing because we haven't lost in the white yet this season i've now sort of talked myself into the idea that the white kit is invincible mm. so we'll go to it's the end theory. of the season not losing in it and i'm fully aware that you know we could lose at watford you know could lose at home to Hull, whatever, Sunderland, but... I feel like I want to do a Matt Letitia, look into the middle distance of a, hmm, not lost in that, yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, makes you think. But uh, it's, I don't know, I don't know. I, I, feel like, I feel like that's a big jinx for this weekend, I was to be honest. Say, <laughs> about a minute ago, I was saying I'm being dead grown up about it, and that's that's the, <laughs> the those are the ideas of a child that I've just put forward, aren't they? <laughs> but, but, you know, such is the duality of football, boys and girls. Mm. Um, but it's, it's going to be exciting either way, isn't it? Millwall, though. Fucking Millwall. Nah, it could be good, though. We beat them easily earlier in the season, didn't we? Although mm. they've they've got their Millwall back, haven't they? Yeah, but as with the like the Sheffield Wednesday game, people, how oh, well it, the, the derby's a bit of a leveller, and you know it's Friday night under the lights, there'll be an atmosphere and all. And in the end, we were just miles too good for them. Mm. Yeah, we've got. I mean, they've got Neil Harris back, which is it is a very he's the most Millwally person around, isn't he? So that's going to trigger a little bit of PTSD of League One and various championship battles over the years we should cross sell the uh, the member show at this point as well because we've been ranking the uh all the managers in the championship mm. haven't we? we've done it over three shows eight on each show i think we might have missed neil harris did we know we did no, we, we did this year we did this week because he's, he's, he's a water order. dwelling mammal of course he is yeah of course he is. and we finished on daniel farker who i think was quite close to the top spoiler alert he's, he's done quite well in this yes yeah but uh yeah obviously we've in him getting the millwall job it freed up the Cambridge job for Gary Monk, who's now stinking the place out. Is that right? Yeah, getting a, got dicked by Scoobs, didn't he? Six nil, absolutely demolished him. Did you see who scored two of the goals and assisted another? A Moylan. Cousin Jack. Cousin yeah. Jackie. Yeah. Little Jackie. Little Jackie M. Tight and everything he knows, didn't you? Yep. Yep. Are you, are you claiming in them on like that Lord one? Who you, who you say has nothing to do with you? That apparently. Tory Lord. No, he's a fuckwit, isn't he? <laughs> that Tory Lord. He yeah. speaks very highly of you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he is another Daniel, so I'm, I'm pleased I got the, like the Twitter handle, Dan Moylan, mm. and not not that fucker. But uh, anyway. He's, he's low-key doing very well, he's Scoobs, isn't he? He's on a... Lincoln were just sort of mid-table last time I checked on them, but I had a proper look after they beat um, they beat Monk 6-0, and they're, uh, they're on the verge of the playoffs now. Well, it's funny, the sort of madness of the Football League, because... They're 11 unbeaten, but when Scoobs got the job, they were four points off the playoffs. They've gone 11 unbeaten and just beat Barnsley 5 1 at the weekend as well. They're three points off the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he could, I was going to say you can almost smell Steve Evans, but um, that's probably always the case, etc. But yeah, he's in his Stevenage is sixth at the moment. So Speaking of Millwall bastards, how's Steve Morrison getting on in his managerial career? Because that was all coming apart at the seams the other week, wasn't it? Who's he managing? Sutton. Right, I'm just having a look at the Please EFL. Please report they're still rooted to the bottom of it. The EFL... No, nothing against Sutton, by the way, but it's just... Yeah, yeah. they did beat us that time, didn't they? Yeah, yeah the but, EF... you know, everyone does. EFL League 2 table of the 24 teams in that division, uh, they are 24th, aren't they? Yeah. That's... Of 27 points, and they are six points adrift, but they are, have played the most games by some distance, so they're fucked. That's nice, actually. That's really cheered me up. I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah. He won't stick around, will he? will get the do. fucking Millwall job after Harris, to be fair. Has he already done it? Uh, no, he did Cardiff, didn't he? 
I kind of there's such a crossover. I feel like between mm. between the two of them, he's 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 gonna do it eventually, isn't he? Oh god, completely. It'll be um, they'll have another. I'm just is he definitely gonna manage him? No, he hasn't. I, I almost can't believe he's not had a stint there. Yeah. Yet. But yeah, they'll have a bit where Harris will get sacked, then they'll they'll try to do something different. They'll employ like a young manager or a foreign manager. They'll decide he's not Millwall enough and he doesn't understand it. So then they'll instead employ the guy who got sacked for dragging Sutton out of the football league. You know when they uh, pivot over to doing to doing something exciting and exotic, mm-hmm. do you think it'll be like a German manager? Because there's a big trend for sort of German managers in the EFL. Do you yeah. think that go down well? Mm, I don't know. The Queen Mum. Yeah. She was there during the Blitz. Yeah. That might count against in the East End. Mm. Yeah, so it's a disrespect to her, really, isn't it? Yeah, to her memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In many ways, they'll just end up with like Scott Parker, won't they? And the work <laughs> accepts his Bladigan. They'll get Morrison. He'll fuck it up. They'll get Warnock. <laughs> an an eighty-four-year-old Neil <laughs> yeah. Warnock. Did you see that um, Birmingham have reached the uh, that point in the Warnock cycle? Yes. By the way, in their pushing the, they're pushing the button, aren't they? Yeah. Like, just get him in. Yeah. And Sunderland have been mentioning him as well. So yeah. God, I hope, he, I hope he goes in somewhere and takes them down. I mean, God, if Birmingham could have a season where they have both Rooney and Warnock. Who have they got now? It's a good question. <laughs> do, uh, we, do, oh, we, do we just rank the managers? Well, it's Tony Mowbray, isn't it? But he's ill. Oh, right, okay. So he's he's having, he basically got the job and he's now having the rest of the season off because he's, right. I'm, not, I'm not sure they said what's actually wrong with him, but yeah, he's obviously, he's obviously ill in some way, fairly seriously. So he's having, to, he's having to take some time away, but he might come back to a team in League One. How, yeah. do, how do people fall for the why not shtick though? It's, it's remarkable. It's mind-boggling, isn't football's it? Football's full of idiots, though, isn't it? Well, I get it, like club owners though, with no ideas. But fans, come on, I think... just listen to him. He's a wanker. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't think he was as bad as he is until we. Well, I I sort of thought he was a wanker, and then I was, I almost bought into it for a little bit because you think you know it's it's just sort of says fairly sensible, straightforward stuff. But then it was seeing what he was saying in relation to the game I'd just watched made me realise he's a complete fraud. He's yeah. like, this, this just isn't, it bears no resemblance to what I've just watched. It's, it's, like, it's the Jesse lighting. Marsh thing, isn't it, I guess? When yeah, it's very Jesse similar, Marsh's actually. football and then listen to him talking, you think, no. Yeah, he's like, well, we're very unlucky there. It's like, and when he did well, the, Not really, no. Was it the Monday Night Football he did the other week? And there were a few people on Twitter, Twitter was like divided half. People were like, oh, he's like really good at talking. His analysis is good. And then the other half were like, and we've seen his teams, they're fucking yeah. awful. It's like it's very it's easy to piece things together afterwards. Mm. Go, yeah, this this is what you should have done here. It's like, well, yeah, that's because it's happened. I told the lads to do this. <laughs> it's just they need to be, have the right mindset, don't they? That was um, speaking of Scoobs. He did one of those weird coach's voice articles mm. this week. And he was chatting about when he got the Leeds job. And he's like, you know, Jesse was great. I I agreed with a lot of stuff he did. But when I got the job, I was like, can you please just pass the ball out wide? <laughs> on the um, we're completely jumping ahead here, but I feel like it, given we're on Warnock, it's relevant. Um, Adam nominated him as a villain for claiming to have left Aberdeen on a high despite not having won a single league game there and then offering his thoughts on what he would do if he were in charge. <laughs> <laughs> you were in charge. It's a fair point. The Square Ball Podcast. 